All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. And we're going to be joined this time by Paul Spatafora's son, Gino. 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 He said, Spatafora. did the son a favor and came in at 7 a.m. and left his, uh, let Gino come in at 8 a.m. Uh, so here we are, man. How are you, man? Good morning. 17 years old, correct? Yes. 17. What's up, G guys? Oh, we're How good. Going, we're bro? good. Happy to have you, man. Uh, so we, we want to get right into it. But, like, why boxing, man? You've seen... I guess you have to know your father's story, right? Yeah. So why why did you pick boxing? Um. Well, just seeing all the things my dad went through. It was a lot of good before he made his like own decisions and his own wrong decisions. But it was a lot of good for the most part. And I, I like seeing my dad work when he was working. Because when I was younger, I used to get to see my dad work out a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like to see my dad work out. It was pretty, it was real. Like he, he goes crazy when he works out. So I felt like I could do the same thing. So, how long have you been having this itch? Uh, well, when I was like younger, when I was like eight, I used to fight for a little bit when I used to live with my dad, and then I started moving with my mom. And then I haven't, I, I haven't been fighting like that for a couple of years. And then I, my dad, well, I actually just started getting into it, back into it like this year around. And then, yeah, my dad came out, and then we just been getting fights in as much fights as we can. All right, so uh. When when you went to your father and told him this is what you wanted to do, what did he? How did he express himself? What did he say? Well, my dad always told me he was always told me like I never have to fight. He was like my dad could literally care less if I ever fought in my life. He mm -hmm. always always made it be my decision. So I, I like I like was comfortable about actually coming to him and telling him that I wanted to come forward and fight and try my try my, try my skills. And so, how do how do he take it? He was excited. Did he, get excited? He, loved, okay. he, he loved it because I fought when I was eight, and he loved he loved training me when I was. So younger. yeah, he told us that you had a couple of fights in the amateurs early on. So so, what happened there? Why why did you stop? Well, a part of the reason why I stopped was I don't know. Like, I just wasn't really enjoying it as much. I mean, I don't know as much as I really was. And then I got into the, I was I got into a one this one fight with this older kid. And then it sucked for me, so I was like, oh, this shit sucks. But now it's different. What's different? I swear, like, I'm ready now. Like, I'm hungry, but I'm hungry for it now. But wow. when I was younger, I was just, like, doing it just to, just to make my dad happy and just to, just to do it, just for fun. I'll do it just, like, as a sport, as like, just, like, as any sport, but it's not like any sport. I can tell you that for sure. It takes a lot of dedication, man. Yeah, for sure. You ready for all those sit-ups and... Yeah, Mile, all the miles you gotta so, run and the yeah. hours in the gym. Do you think that, uh, given what your dad's gone through and everything, and you know the mistakes that he's made, that it's it's almost it almost helps you because you like I never want to go down that path. Right. Yeah. For sure it does. And and now that obviously you guys are out here training, you feel like even your dad is maybe happier he's more motivated because he sees you and it's you that he's training it's not just any other fighter yeah it's, for sure it's, it's his son that he's training you know for sure yeah and there's not really a lot of uh, good things he has to look forward to when he goes home like in pittsburgh mm -hmm. uh, i like like when he comes out here he has something to look forward to so you sure. think you so wait so you live out here yeah or you i always lived i lived out here for like Five years now, but I I'm used to live with my dad around like third grade, and okay. then I moved I moved out here. Like so, third grade. so he's back in Pittsburgh For the, and just came to yeah, he help just, you train. He just came back, but I'm trying to get him to stay out here. Yeah, like that's like that's my goal. I want him to get him to stay out here, but I want him to get him to actually have more people he could train. So it's not just me, and he also trains his, his other pro, Tommy, great fighter. But uh, I just want and Tommy's out of Pittsburgh. Tommy's actually from here. Okay. He's a great fighter. I'm pretty sure he has a fight coming up like next month. But um, what's his last name? Tommy. I don't not know his last name. Mm. I forget his last name. But he's staying with us. Okay. So, but yeah, I just want to get my dad more fighters, like just people to train type, so he can have money coming out here. Because that's the only thing. Because mm -hmm. back home, he like he told you guys, he works in his like, tree business. Mm -hmm. He just needs some some income to come to stay out here. For but sure. That's what I'm just trying to get. Yeah. Once he picks up a couple fighters, mm -hmm. you know, it'll be easier. I swear. So you do understand that people are going to come for your head because of your last name. Mm -hmm. And you also know that historically, 
Only Mayweather's the junior to succeed the the father. Like Junior Chavez didn't yeah. pass senior. Yeah, typically the children don't surpass what the fathers uh, you know, have accomplished. It's a pretty tough road. You prepared for all that? The comparisons, people are always oh, not as slick as his father. Yeah, or he's fun. just like his father. Are you prepared for that? Yeah, that's fine. I'm, I'm prepared for that. Okay. Okay. So you seem for, mature. For those who haven't seen you fight, uh, you know, how would you compare your style? Just like my dad, as much as much as really for being right handed. Your dad was very slick in the pocket. He didn't move. I mean, well, I guess before I got, the shot. Yeah, yeah before. that's different because I do got legs, so I could get her. Like I can move around the ring more than my dad could. He always tells me that in my legs. He always wants me to be more active on my legs than just sitting there. But so, so how long have you, since you've been here? Five years, you're saying? I've been in Vegas for like five years. Yeah. How many of those years have you been boxing? Just this year. Oh, you just started this year mm -hmm. in January. Mm, I've been training with Jesse Reed okay. before my dad came out here, so like probably around last year, like maybe I don't, I couldn't even tell you the exact month, but around this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jesse's very capable and Jesse's knowledgeable beast. for sure. For sure, Jesse's beast. So obviously, being in Vegas, stuff you know, fight capital of the world. Do you feel that you've been able to like learn a lot more quick because you are in Vegas and? You know, all the champions that you get to train around and be around and all the experienced fighters and whatnot? Or? Yeah, for sure. Um, down at DLX, a great gym. They have a lot of, um, like, fighters down there, former fighters. And it doesn't always just have to be champions. And it could just be good, like, good right, fighters of course. to teach you a lot. And for sure, there's a lot of people down there that help me. Yeah, and there's I mean, a lot of doesn't kids. Moulton oh, trade out of there? Carmel? I don't see him. I heard you say that last time, but I seen that one video you were talking about. Carmel's a beast for yeah. sure, but um, I don't really see him as much. I talked oh, to him. Maybe about that was just a fight. sparring day. I talked to him about the one fight. He said he used to come down there as much, but not as much some more. Mm. Yeah. So what division would you be fighting at if you turned pro? And 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 I mean, your dad said you were looking at the Olympics, right? Yeah, my dad actually wants me to stay in the amateurs for another four or five years just to mm. go to the Olympics, but. It doesn't matter to me. Whatever my dad would think best, because I'm going to trust my dad. Whatever yeah, I mean, you're 17. Yeah. 21 ain't bad. How old? Do, I mean, Core turned that 19, I right? mean, we in 2022, so I want to say trials are like at the end of this year mm. for the Olympics. For, and then how many years from that? A year and a half, because this summer of 24. Okay. Yeah, so it'd be summer yeah, of 24. It's not that bad. Yeah, two more years. That's not a long time. Another two years. Which will put him around that Shakur Stevenson age, the 18, 19. Right, because you're 17 now. Yeah, so you mm -hmm. can still turn pro. When's your birthday? December 1st. Yeah, so you can still turn pro at 19, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 20 years old. It's always good to get that Olympic background. If you can have that on your resume, you know, the the the, the, the bigger promoters look yeah, at you. Yeah, I was going to say, especially when it comes to getting a promoter, if, if you're an Olympic, you're damn near guaranteed mm -hmm. to, to sign with somebody. I mean, you have the advantage of the last name. And the last name. Sorry. You know, so now, if you can make it to the Olympics, at least, uh, you know, it's going to help. You know, meddling would be amazing. Yeah, that would be know? a dream. Come For through. sure. So you said it would be a dream. So when, when, when did it become a dream for you? Because like you said, you were doing it for your dad in the beginning. So when did it become a dream for you? When did you realize, I want to do this for me? And and what was it that triggered that? Well, um, honestly, just like looking at my options, my dad, like he wants me to go to the military. Mm -hmm. And then I, I don't want to be able to, like, I don't want to fight. I don't want to pick up no gun and shoot nobody or nothing like that. My dad was telling me I could box in the military. Mm -hmm. And I do, I do love boxing. Like, it's something I could do, and I like it. Like, and I'm pretty good at it. Like, I go home my own in it, so I, I feel like I would do that. Mm. Okay, yeah, the military. My man here joined yeah. in one of those services. He told me I could go, and then I could also go there to get go to the um, Olympics. Mm -hmm. I went there. I mean, Jamel Heron. Yep. You know, that's how Jamel Heron did it, so. Yeah. Obviously, I think this is a better and easier route, you know, a more convenient route, but it's still going to be a long and a difficult one, that's for sure. Um, 
do you watch as much boxing or cuz I know I know your dad's really into it. Do you do you watch do you watch mu- much of it yourself? Yeah, I watch boxing a lot. Like all the new fights that come on for the most part I watch it. Uh, what about the old fighters though? Yeah, I watched a lot of Tommy Hearns, Roberto Duran. I, I watched almost every one of my dad's fights. Mm. I watch a lot of old fighters like Sweet Pea. Um, a lot of fighters my dad likes and put me on for the most part. Which uh, which one of your dad's fights your favorite? Which one of his fights is my favorite? Mm-hmm. Gotta be the Cardona fight. But I also like the Sosa fight. Mm. Mm. I like that Cardona fight for sure. I just like my dad was having the time of his life in that fight. I, you could just see it in his eyes. That's why I like that fight the, like the most. How would you describe your, uh, you and your dad's relationship? Because when we see father son uh, trainer and you know fighter and trainer duels, it's kind of interesting to see because each one is different. Each father son duel we're around is different that we see is different. So how would you describe the relationship with you and your dad? amazing because i respect my dad like to the utmost respect because everything i know he might not be right about stu- other stuff he says it's not about boxing but as soon as it comes to boxing he's on target with everything he says I, i'll but fully trust and believe everything he says about boxing if he tells me to do something i'll do it in a second hmm. so for you for you um are you guys like able to or do you guys separate the relationship because or is it like always boxing or is it like okay right now you're my trainer and right now you're my dad um no it's just just me and my dad that's how we always been if my dad ever wants to just come downstairs for a second say get on that get on your gloves and he hit the hand pass for a little bit that's just what it is if, if not we're watching the fight we're watching the old fight and then my dad says i want to show you something hit the hand pass real quick shows me something that's cool <laughs> my dad's that's always true. about boxing so 110 percent about boxing most of the time 99 percent about boxing <laughs> for my dad so with you it was never any other sport i played i played different sports like i played football for a little bit and i stopped playing football over quarantine okay but i stopped playing football and i started boxing okay. i was playing football for a little bit so at what weight would you come at what weight are you competing in the amateurs currently right now i'm competing at like 119 but i weigh like one <coughs> i weigh Excuse 115 me. for real but i've been my last fights have been at 119 but just so i don't go overweight but yeah so um let's say you do progress and go on and get that olympic opportunity ideally to you it would be at 115 Mm, hopefully by then I would get a little bigger, so probably around like 120, 120 like around that. Okay. Around 119, yeah. Okay. But if I got a little bigger, it just depends how my body grows. Okay, that's true. Still young, still growing. Mm-hmm. Still mm-hmm. growing, still growing. It's crazy because um, what weight did your father get up? Didn't he get up to lightweight? Yeah. 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 I mean, but you are still young, like he said. Yeah, he could easily get up to... I mean, How you, tall just, are you? you just never know. Five, seven. You just never know because yeah, Bradley was 5'8", 140. And obviously made it to 47. I was going to say, some fighters just hit these growth spurts. And mm-hmm. I mean, fuck, Pacquiao started at what, 15? No, I thought it was 108. Oh, yeah, that's right. 08, oh, you know, and that's crazy. got up to 47. But, you know, some fighters uh, hit growth spurts and. You never know, may be able to go up to 35, 40, 47. Mm-hmm. Never really know. So you have a tournament scheduled or something? Yeah, I'm supposed to be fighting tomorrow, actually. Oh, wow. I was, I was supposed to be fighting today, but I don't know if they got me on a buy or, or what because my name didn't pop up on the, on the sheets for today. So huh. I'm hoping it's for tomorrow. Is that frustrating? Yeah, because me and my dad are trying to get as many fights as we can, mm-hmm. especially before I turn 18. And then uh, we're also going to Atlanta on on the 9th for an Atlanta for a fight down by the boardwalk. Nice. And oh, in Atlantic City? Okay. Okay, that should be fun. I've never been out there. To Atlantic City? Never been. Never uh, been. Yeah. That's like uh, was supposed to be the other Vegas, man. It didn't take off. It's because of the cold weather, man. No, who, who wants four seasons? Right. You know? There are some people that like four seasons. Yeah, there. I don't know. I think uh, you just got to do it the right way. New York City's popping, right? Um, Yeah, but New York City doesn't have casinos. I know, but what I'm saying, you got to do it. I feel like... Well, that's what they thought. They thought by putting casinos on the waterfront, 
Mm. But, it bring the people. But it's, uh, I mean, I mean, it had his day, right? Tyson was down there. You know, Arturo Gotti made a living out there. It had his day. Definitely some great fights out there. Mm-hmm. So how many amateur fights have you had so far? Three. Three? Well, my so, dad's been out here, and that's what I've, that's all I have so far. And I have a couple fights when I was, like, younger, when I was, like, eight. I have, like, around, like, four or five of those fights, like, when I was peewee. Okay. So now tomorrow you'll get some fights in and then uh, shit next weekend, too. So, damn, you guys trying to go every weekend if you could, huh? Yeah. We've been basically going almost every week. That's good. Definitely getting those rounds and that experience in quick. Yeah. You know? My dad you, says that's the most important. Win but, or lose, let's go do it. But those fights that you had before, those don't count? Honestly, I don't know because I haven't seen them. Like, on my book, because, you know, they give us a book. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen I haven't even seen those fights. Mm. And if you don't have your old book, you can't claim those fights? I don't know how that works, to be wow. honest with you. I just know they gave me a new book, and then it didn't have any of my fights on it. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. That's interesting. I mean, not that it'll really matter, right? Four or five fights from way back when. Yeah, we back then we was just throwing punches the whole round, and that would be it. Right. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Who do you like to see out of the current fighters now? You said that you obviously watch all the current fights. So who are you watching and who are you learning from picking things up from? I like all um, I like all the fighters at lightweight. Lightweight's a good division right now. Mm-hmm. Which So which one's your favorite? Because it is a really good division. I like Tank. I like Lomo. I don't know. I like a lot of them. I like Cambosis, even though he just lost it to, he- to Haney. I was really hoping he was going to win, but I like Haney, too, a lot. Yeah, uh, we were talking about the sparring that your dad had with Devin. Obviously, that jab, that jab being yeah, very... Yeah, kept him the whole fight. You know, shit, won him the fight, right? Yeah. Really? Off the jab alone, do you find that to be something important? Obviously, if you're going to be a fighter that moves, a fighter that sure. that is slick, that jab is going to be key. For sure. That was a perfect fight for Haney. He fought that perfectly. There's nothing else he, better he could have did. Mm. But I'm saying for you, uh, you said you're a fighter that is slick, like your dad, a fighter that, but in a way even better because you can move your feet more and move mm. around the ring. So I'm saying doing that, you find that jab to be very important for you yeah. and your style. Yeah, the jab's my most important punch probably. And what would be your second favorite to throw? My left hook. I like the jab because you could like, it's used for like, Way more than one thing. You could block a punch with a jab. You could set someone's timing off with a jab to land another punch, or you could do a lot with the jab. Definitely uh, can do a lot with the jab. Uh, it's funny because you guys are talking jabs, but you wanted Cambosos to win. Wouldn't it, I don't know, frustrate you that he didn't change gears? That he didn't adjust to the he jab? Couldn't. He couldn't. There was nothing he could do. To me and my, I mean, he was trying. If he could have, he would have. If you, if you, I, I, I never seen him try to do a, a Mike Tyson. You know what I'm saying? I never seen him. I don't know. Did he triple that jab? To cut? I don't know. I don't know. He never really hit the body either. No, I know. I was watching that fight and I was hoping Cambosis would uh would come do, would do something, but never did. I Devin definitely kept him contained with that jab, and that's why the jab's so important. He just kept him in a box the whole fight. So. And and not just that, but it'd be like. It would throw Cambosos off because sometimes Devin's throwing a jab to set his shit up, mm-hmm. but sometimes he's throwing it while George is setting his shit up. Yeah. So then it throws him off, and now he has to reset. Yeah, and that was, so, that's how it was. And Devin knew exactly when to throw the jab, and that's what I'm saying. Timing. He straight that fight. His timing sure. was uh, very... Incredible. It was on on that fight. That's all the experience that you get from all those fights and all the pro fights, amateur fights, all that. N- not just that, but I mean... Uh, they're from the Bay Area. They're from Oakland. So from since he was young, they're coming to Vegas to train. And he's in sparring. I mean, he was he sparred your dad when he was 15. Exactly. You know, and, and I don't want to mix your dad's words up, but I'm pretty sure your dad's, you know, for lack of better words, said that he got his ass kicked, you yeah. know, in that sparring. So, you know, I feel like. I mean, his dad was 40. No, no, I get that. But what I'm saying is. Being in Vegas gave him the opportunity to spar so many world champions. And I feel that a lot of those sparring sessions with world champions have benefited him more than those amateur fights. Mm -hmm. Because obviously the amateur style and the pro style is different and not just that. But 
you when you're say you spar an amateur fighter, mm -hmm. they're gonna spar the amateur style. Right. You sparring a, a world champion in pro boxing, they're gonna spar like a world champion. So For sure. you know, I feel like a lot of that is inevitable and, and it's just very key. Especially living here in Vegas to get as many of those opportunities. Being as you in DLX, can. have you gotten in there? Yeah, with um, uh, Nonito. Oh no, not with Nonito. He gets there at like early, around like eight. I usually go there around like three p.m., four mm. p.m. He gets there early, like whenever he was going. I did see when he was going. He was going there like nine a.m. sharp. But I was going to school at that time. But yeah, I've got in there. You guys know who DJ. Uh, Cruel is or yeah, yeah, DJ he's a Curl? beast. Yeah. He's really an underrated fighter. He's a beast. He showed me a lot. In, Former in a world champ. We've been we worked together. Yeah, for sure. Former world champ. He's a dog. I really like him. Yeah, no, and I think Nonito was going at that time too because he was trying to fight as close to um the Japan time as mm -hmm. possible. Yeah, you know, so because I think here it was like five thirty a.m. was the fight or five a.m. was the fight. So I think he was trying to fight as close to their time as possible. Didn't he do um some time some type of tournament? No, yeah, you know? he did. He did the uh, uh, World Boxing Super Series. What is that kind of stuff? I never seen anything like. So that. no, the World Boxing Super Series. It's just a private tournament that they would put on. They've put on a couple of them. So they did one at one eighteen. So bantamweight, they which is how he fought uh uh in a way the first time. They did one at super middleweight at 168 pounds. They did one at cruiserweight. They did one at 140 pounds. That's how Josh Taylor and Regis Progray fought. Mm -hmm. So they've done a couple, but it's not like uh, something that happens in all weight classes or something that goes on. It it just some people with money put it together, and yeah. you know it made sense for you know the fighters certain that, fighters for certain fighters that participate. I seen them get clipped. No need to there, but I. I I seen him still fighting after, like, I think he got knocked out and he fought another fight or something. That was weird to me. Um, He just got knocked out. Oh, uh, he did? Yeah, you probably mm. seen that knockout because it was a second uh, round kind of viral knockout. Oh, yeah. My dad was telling me about it, I'm pretty sure. But I, do you lose and then you fight again if you lose or once you lose, you're out? Nah. Well, you mean in the tournament? Yeah, in the tournament. Oh, oh. no, no. Yeah, once well, you lose, you were basically You were out. out, but, uh -oh. like, the tournament, like I said, it was just, like, it wasn't like your typical amateur tournament or anything like that. It's just like, all right, we're putting it together. No, it wasn't an amateur tournament, though. I know, but he probably thinks like, you know, you know, in the amateur tournament, it's like, all right, cool, you fight today, and then you win, you move on. You f No, it was like, I can fight today, you can't fight for another month, but the winner of those two fights still fight at some point whenever they can make the fight happen later this year. Yeah. So, weird. you know, but it was still part of the World Boxing Super Series. So, uh, like I said, they did it for a couple of weight classes and whatnot. Yeah. It was good, though. It worked out for Callum Smith. You know, he got the biggest win, right? You're talking about those tournaments, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm saying, like, so Callum Smith, he won the World Boxing Super Series, became champion, defeated Muhammad George Ali Gross. Trophy. You know, that. WBC and, Diamond. So, and from that, that, you know, gave him excuse me the opportunity to fight canelo so you know obviously it made sense for a couple of fighters to i wouldn't even know who josh taylor was if it wasn't for that really yeah, yeah. but he was a beast now i'm glad i do he's one of the he's one of yeah the I, 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 I guess so. in that aspect because uh, there was a lot of international fighters so i guess you make a good point because you know a lot of international fighters hadn't been exposed to the american crowd yet yeah so like uh that's a that's a uh, great point, you know, that that did allow for the American public to learn who some of these fighters were. So do you think you're at a disadvantage because um, essentially you're starting late, even though it's not late, it's late. Some A guy like Carmel started maybe at eight years old, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Uh, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, because uh, I haven't been getting fights in since I was... So I have I haven't consistently fought like all my lifetime, but now I'm getting into it. But no, because I've been around boxing since I was a little, since as long as I can remember. Like I've been around and always been working on the pads with my dad since I was young. Always working out with my dad, the bag, in the gyms with my dad, in and out a lot when I was younger. And and some would say that you know, 
you lose something having too many amateur fights, you know, especially at a young age, you know. Um, not everybody time. wants their son having amateur fights you at know, seven, eight, nine, not, and ten. Not just that, but I think a, a big problem with with uh, with that Ness is what he talks about. You said that in the beginning you were doing it just to make your dad happy. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I feel like that's what happens in a lot of cases where, yo, the kid doesn't really like doing this shit. Well, even whenever I was doing it to make my dad happy, my dad always was like, you do not have to do this mm -hmm. if you don't want to. So it was never like, it was never like, like if you don't do it, then this See, and that. but, but you like, stopped. And that's what yeah. I'm saying. A lot of kids don't. Yeah. And a lot of parents don't give their child the an opportunity or an opportunity. Yeah, for sure. You're so what I'm saying right is that, that I feel that not just do fighters maybe get burned out if they're doing it that long. They just lose the drive, the hunger, the passion. Yeah. Like now, you, you really could have did anything and now you're older to where you're starting to experience it. So to me, it's like at this point, you really could have did anything and you chose to do this. So obviously, I feel like that drive, that hunger, that love is there for it. You know, I don't think that this is, uh, you know, like we said, we ask a lot of the young kids, how do we know you're going to stay in yeah. boxing? Well, well, for him, it's different because it's the same question we asked. For instance, uh, Yulika, she's 12. Five years later, look at where he's at. He, you know, he did it for his father. Realize it wasn't for him, but now it's calling him back. So it is for him. So, it, it, you know, he's gotten that time to decide whether or not it's what he wants to do. He's been drawn back to it. Right. So now it's just a matter of putting in the work. And that and that's not an issue. Mm -hmm. Again, the fact that you know you have to run, especially to be like your father, to be able to be in that pocket. to to And you said you use your feet. To use your feet, you have yeah. to have a lot of endurance. Boxing, like I always say, and it's all over certain gyms, they use that phrase. It's like um, stamina makes cowards of men. Like if you don't have that, you're going to lose. But if you have stamina, you can actually beat someone that's more skilled than you because, mm -hmm. you know, their skills deteriorate if they don't have the right amount of endurance or stamina. That's what Jesse always says. Jesse says he was never the most skilled fighter, but he always was in shape and always was prepared. Exactly, man. Like Margarito. Obviously, his, his career is tainted because of the raps, but, like, he wasn't this technically gifted fighter. He's just a dude that's coming forward. Buzzsaw. Even, um, well, I wouldn't put Juan Diaz in that, right? He was pretty. He just didn't have a lot of power. He he, he let his hands go, though. But but maybe I'm right because his career ended early because he was so, you I know. mean, even Sean Porter, like, he was very untraditional, mm -hmm. right? But, but his work stamina, ethic took him yeah, to the top. His stamina, his work ethic. You know, made him a multiple time world champion. So mm -hmm. Sean and my dad used to go running together all the time. My dad used to be out here. Sean's a beast. He's yeah. different with it. He's he's on. I, I I I continuously say that I don't know that we'll ever get another Sean Porter. I don't think Some that you can respect to Sean. He fought he fought everyone he could. Mm -hmm. Not just that, but that style. Like you get what mm -hmm. I'm saying, bro. Think about this. He. For the current unified heavyweight champion of the world in the amateurs, Alexander Usyk, and beat him. I didn't even know that, but that's crazy. Like yeah. Sean is Sean. No, he dropped Daniel Jacobs like six times in amateurs. Yeah, that's at crazy one too. six five, that's crazy. and never fought at six five in, as a pro. Started at I think fifty four and went eventually went down to six uh, forty seven. To forty seven. And Kenny told me he was better that he was better than football than he was not fighting. Like and did. I and I believe it because his body is made for football. I mean, he's he, compact. He could have been a running back. I don't. I, no, he was. was a running back. He was a running go. back. And I don't. I run, didn't he get a scholarship? Yeah, I was gonna say I don't know what, what schools, but I know he had D one offers. You get what I'm saying? And Ohio is a football state. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Ohio is oh, yeah. a football. I mean, but you state. could tell, bro. Sure. Anybody with his work ethic would would definitely be suited for football because you know you need the same thing: high stamina, uh, explosiveness. And, and Sean was cocky as hell, man. So, you know, he put them shoulders down and bowled somebody over. So he start, He did start. His first fight ever was at 165. Next one, 57, 56, 57, 55, 54. 50. Eventually, he just went down. So he had one fight at 65 and caught a TKO. 
But yeah, man, uh, those are all my questions. If you could give out your social media. Um, my Instagram is Spatafora with the three instead of a O. Okay. And then, um, so that's S P A D A F, the number three R A. So did they? They, yeah. they you couldn't do Gino Spatafora? They didn't have that. Uh, I didn't put my last name. I just kept the. I, I didn't put my first name. I just kept the last name on there. Man, boxer now, man. You need those uh, casual fans to find you because not everyone knows. Swear. You. That's for sure. Swear I was thinking up. about uh, starting a YouTube for me and my you dad. You should definitely. And putting um, bro, your dad not only my your, fights, your, but our training on there. Yeah, you bro. should definitely do not, that. Not just that, but the fact that your dad watches the fights. Now, imagine if you and your dad can talk about the fights, and now you're watching it as an amateur and talking about it from your point of view, and your dad's talking about it from a former champ's point of view. Yeah, my dad's a beast with all no, that. No, and listen to me. Um, I got tons of messages. Your dad thanking me to yeah. have him on, and oh man, I miss Patafora. That was yeah. amazing. You need to get more guys like that, and uh, you know people don't have access to him. So yeah, you should definitely open up a YouTube channel for the both of you guys to to let his fans find him, man. Because he had I got a friend in Ohio that I know now for ten years that always talks to me about uh, Spatafora. So yesterday when we were doing, I mean the day we were doing your dad's interview, I literally text him live. You know, so he could listen because it's one of his favorite fighters. So, yeah, man, you should definitely do that. My dad is, I'm going to say this now, my dad's probably the easiest person to contact if you find one of his Instagrams. And the one he always, he's using now is Paul Spatter for a fish, so he's a very easy person to contact. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to get a hold of him, you could very easily talk but to yeah, him. But, yeah, I was going through your dad's Instagram. He just made that shit like a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying, like. You know, some people, especially during that time when your dad's fighting, social media is not a thing, right? Well, my dad does not care about Instagram. Me and my mom are actually the ones that made him the Instagram account. Good. Literally, my mom's the one that runs it. Good, but, good. Um, yeah, we're just trying to get him on the same one because he has like five different just random Paul Spatafores. This one's from a while ago, but the one that he's on now is going to be the main one for him. Good, yeah. No, you know, stick with it because obviously social media is a motherfucker, mm -hmm. man. Yeah, for sure. And uh, let me tell you, Jake Paul's made a couple million from boxing because he was able to be big on social media. I know. So. Yeah. It's crazy. He made more money than my dad made at boxing. He's not even a boxer. Yeah. And that's real. That's crazy. I mean, he's a boxer now. I mean, you can call him a boxer if you want. Jake I Paul? I mean, why not? What is he doing different than what you're doing? He trains. Mm -hmm. He puts yeah. the work in. He spars. <laughs> he runs. And he and he and he's sparring real people. He, man. Yeah, he like like my. I would thing, love to get the opportunity to to uh, work with Jake Paul, like spar, like help him for a fight or something. I'd love to do that. Bro, you know he yeah, weighs you by like eighty pounds, right? I mean, yeah, but shit, I still do it. Yeah, I would do it too if I were you, man. Yeah, that, nah, I you. that publicity is worth it. Not even for the publicity, just to just to just to do it. Cause I don't know, I just want to do that. That'd be fun to me. Mm. No, nah, for sure, for sure. We're actually in contact. We're, uh, 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 you know, with somebody from his team trying to see when we could come down to Puerto mm -hmm. Rico. You know, see that sounds him, amazing. See Doesn't him. he train down there? Yeah, that, yeah. yeah he lives him, down yeah, there to go That's see him up. train or whatnot. That's what's yeah. up. I I would like to see Jake. It would be amazing if Jake Paul actually would would come out and fight one like a good fighter and actually win. That would be cool. So you don't I think would, Tommy Fury it. is a good fighter? Not respectable. Did they fight? No, they, that's I'm, the I'm, that's the fight that he's trying to get confirmed. It was official. It was official. Tommy was not allowed into the country. Is he related to Tyson Fury? Yeah, that's his half brother. That's yep. exactly who it is. That's his brother. Tyson half brother. Fury. Yep, yep, yep. Like half brother, meaning like same you know, dad. Bro, oh, they're real brothers. Uh, yeah, I feel like Tommy Fury will get the best of him, man. If yeah, that, you. So you're like me. I hate when people say half brothers. Like, what the fuck does that mean? Yeah, I don't. I don't believe in that either. Cause all my sister, you could, all my family and my sisters. You guess you could say half, but that's. That no, I mean, mean I got I I got all half brothers. I, I, if you want to be technical, I don't call them that. I'm just saying yeah. that that's what's promoted on uh on the internet. So uh, I, I know mean, that's his brother, but yeah. That'd be a good fight. I don't but know. I mean, I Jake Paul, really li like, hard. like, literally, nobody fights anybody in the fucking beginning of their career. Yeah, that's yeah. Also and he's true. fighting names and in the beginning true. of his career. He's at least true. fighting, you know, f people who have done something in combat sports. No, mm -hmm. that's for sure. Especially being Tyron Woodley was impressive to me. Man, my thing is the this, way he beat him. My swear. thing, my my thing is this: like, he's respecting the sport. He's you know giving the sport the time. 
He's, he's bringing training. more people to the sport. Yeah, yeah, obviously that. But, you know, it's not like he's just doing it just for the money. Like, he's literally putting oh, yeah. the work in. So, to me, it's like you got to give him his credit. No, I yeah. give him his credit. I, I like Jake Paul. I used to, I was actually subscribed to him when I was a little kid, so it was cool seeing him fight now. Oh, really? oh wow. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had never heard of him till he fought, you know. KSI. Well, that was Logan, but yeah. That yeah was, but that's when they both, that's when they both popped up to yeah. me. Yeah. yeah, no, same, same. Same, but yeah, man, give your Instagram one more, more time for those that didn't catch it. And it's um, S-P-A-D-A-F-3-R-A. Yep, so Spatter 4, but instead of uh, O, it's it is three. the number 3. All right, brother, so we'll take a quick intermission. Take take this. This. What up, YouTube family? Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Help us get to that million subscribers. We're on the road to a million. And... Obviously, we have other great content on our Patreon channel. So since this video is over, head on over to our Patreon and check out all the exclusive content or right here on our YouTube members.